stuff, we'd best be getting back to Hogwarts. In Diagon Alley, Harry gained the lacewing flies he needed for the Polyjuice potion. At the apothecary, he got rid of an infestation of Cornish pixies and received some leeches in return. Harry and Hagrid headed back to Hogwarts. Well done getting all the ingredients I asked for. Did you manage to get any powdered horn of bicorn? Yes, but I had to sneak into Snape's office last night to get it. She wouldn't get me creeping about in Snape's office, especially at night. Here's the fluxweed and knot grass. And here are the boomslang skin, lace wings and leeches. How long until the polyjuice potion's ready? I'm afraid we still need some extra ingredients. Something from Crab and Goyle. I've already managed to get some hair from Millicent Bulstrode. I hope you're not saying that you're going to turn us into Crab, Goyle and Millicent Bulstrode. Well, Crab and Goyle in particular are the only people Malfoy trusts. He'll tell them anything. You do want to find out whether Malfoy's the heir of Slytherin, don't you? Of course we do. I just hope that the Polyjuice potion will wear off. That's all. Of course it will. Ron, I think you should try and steal some hair from Crab and Goyle after lunch. They like to have a nap after feeding their faces. I've got a bad feeling about this. Come on, Ron. Let's leave Hermione to prepare the potion. This potion is going to be very difficult to get right. This potion is going to... Girls' bathroom. You're not a girl. Get out! My life was nothing but misery at this place. And now people are coming along, ruining my death. Get out! Hogwarts is like a maze. I suggest you follow the carpet if you want to get back to the common room. I suppose I'd best get some hair from Crab and Goyle. Good luck. I'll meet you by the common room later. Malfoy are in the Great Hall. They've enrolled in the Dueling Club. I wonder who'll be teaching it. 
Let's hope it's not Lockhart. I've had enough of him for one day. Have you heard? Malfoy's in the Great Hall and he's challenging everybody to a duel. Yeah, and no one's beaten him yet. Why don't you go in and duel with him, Harry? I hear you're pretty good. Go on, Harry. I'm sure you can beat him. It'll be great to wipe that smile off his slimy Slytherin face. Great Harry Potter. Fancy a duel? I'm something of an expert. Go on, Harry. You can do it. Better watch out for the candles, Potter. They've got special jinxes in them. Trust me. You're going to need all the help you can get. Get ready. Duel. If you think that makes you the winner, you've got another thing coming. Try this, Potter. Serpent Sortier. Oh, 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 oh.
Hissing furiously, the snake slithered towards Justin Finch Fletchley. Leave him alone, Harry shouted. At least, that was what he thought he'd shouted. When he looked up at Justin, he was met with an angry look. What do you think you're playing at? The snake was lying slumped on the floor, docile as a thick black garden hose. So why was Justin, and everybody else for that matter, regarding him with a look of horror? You're a parcel mouth, Harry. Why didn't you tell us? Harry didn't know what a parcel mouth was, so Ron told him. <laughs> you can talk to snakes, Harry! Hermione informed Harry that being able to talk to snakes was what Salazar Slytherin was famous for, and how the whole school was now going to think that he, Harry Potter, was the heir of Slytherin, and therefore responsible for the attacks. Dumbledore wasn't in his office when Harry got there. It was a very interesting room, however, and nearby Harry spotted the sorting hat. As he approached it, the hat spoke to him. You've been wondering whether I put you in the right house, but I stand by what I said before. You would have done well in Slytherin. Harry's heart plummeted. He told the hat he thought it was wrong. And then a strange gagging noise behind him made him wheel around. Harry yelled in shock as the bird burst into flames, only to emerge from the fire more beautiful than it was before. Then the office door opened and Dumbledore came in. Fawkes the Phoenix is really very handsome, isn't he, Harry? Harry nodded, still shocked by the sight of the bird bursting into flames. Dumbledore explained how phoenixes were fascinating creatures. They can carry immensely heavy loads, and they make highly faithful pets. Dumbledore went on to say that he didn't believe Harry was the attacker plaguing Hogwarts, and he asked if Harry had anything that he wanted to tell him. Harry thought of the disembodied voice he'd heard, and his growing dread that he was connected to Salazar Slytherin, but in the end, he didn't want to say anything about them.